Hi, I'm Omega Rex W. Hi, I'm Neil. Hey, my name is Chris. Hey, I'm Mark. Hi, I'm Melvin. Hi, I'm Matt. <laughs> Wang Team Ayoko. I brought my two most expensive sneakers that I have, like currently here. Um, I oh, think you have, the more, others, you have more expensive sneakers at your parents' house, is what you mean? Yeah, I think I have like maybe three or four more over there. But currently, right now here, these are the ones I have that are the most expensive. Oh one of them's a little, one of them's a little crazy. So, uh, I I guess you'll you'll find out. <laughs> Jeez. Are these shoes yeah. that are like you can buy or they're like custom? No, no, no. You can buy them um, when they release the. Uh, well, so the one question before you show it though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you were to look up how much somebody would buy that, whatever pair of shoes you're going to show us now? What is the street value of your shoes currently? All right. So, so one of them. Do you remember what you bought it at? How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so the retail for one of the sneakers is one sixty, which is like a general. Actually, that's actually a lot cheaper back then. Right now, the price for these sneakers, I think they're around two hundred, like for that model. Uh, but then, if you're talking about this specific colorway for street value, you're talking about over a grand. Uh, I, I want to try to pull up on this this website uh, to see what they're reselling at. Yeah, and. Sure enough, the first thing that pops up is the sneaker. So it's like it's really sawed off right now. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can because I don't want to give away what the sneaker is. But I don't know. If, oh, never mind. You see it. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Thirteen hundred. Yeah, and that's uh, and that's just for I guess a. Uh, the general pricing but then there's one here where it's a size 13 and it's twenty five thousand dollars twenty five thousand twenty five hundred no twenty five thousand do you see it where is it size oh yeah it's size 13. Size, size, yeah size 13. i saw it i saw it, saw it right twenty five thousand yeah. dollars for a size yeah. 13. yeah man it's uh it's uh <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm, you guys already saw it, so I might as well just bring it out. Um, yeah. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah, you want a shoe? I got it. $25,000, yeah, right. please. So these, right? <laughs> Never been so, worn. So, so these are called the uh, South Beaches, right? And it's like one of those sneakers that – it's like a staple in a lot of sneakerheads collection. Uh, it's the LeBron 8, but they nicknamed it South Beach or Preheat because I believe this was the sneaker that – uh, this the eight was the one that was released right before he went to Miami Heat. Mm. So this is the, I mean the LeBron Seven before this I think was one of the uh, his more popular silhouettes of a sneaker. But this one it kind of launched it out there. I don't know why. What is it about turquoise and pink? Um, and a lot of sneakers have been replicating this not not as this particular one, but like different uh like like say regular nike dunks like you'll find the color in this color and then let's say black laces but people will start swapping them for pink to make them look like a south beach like i don't know what it is about it but then they just made it like so coveted for for just sneaker heads in general like around the world whenever you talk about uh what's the most sought off sneaker of a lebron like that same model an eight though they will always say this but um, uh, the south beach i don't know why have you actually worn them outside once look at that it's like look at that. that's brand new bro it, it's just age but even the white's like really really oh, white though. <laughs> still white like i only wore i think i wore it to church just get, once and just then get that's blessed it. really quick and then pretty much put him back then, away. yeah and then um it's like I mean, uh, the comfort for this and then you see the air unit here it helps with uh you know like the the bounce so when yeah. you land like when people play basketball it's gonna be a nice cushion and then the traction underneath it is pretty nice um like, i ha i have played in the lebron 8 but not this one and uh i think it's pretty good it's good traction i think it's a good basketball sneaker so and they're actually starting to bring back the older models like i just picked up a uh, lebron 7 i think it's the the christmas edition because it, it came out around december 
and You're then talking to non heads, dude. I know. So I'm, I'm just I'm talking to the public. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Christmas time? It's it's like Christmas. Yeah. I mean, uh, eventually, eventually, I'll bring those up. But I mean, it's like I because I, I'm just more talking about the price. So actually, since the price, I just said that. Uh, I'll I'll show you how much I ended up paying for these. Uh, wait, six fifty. Yeah, you guys but you, that? but you said they retail that one something first. Well, yeah, they retail that one sixty. Um, and then they got marked up to six fifty. Uh, like right here, it's kind of bent, but yeah, I like got it. I see it. I see it. Yeah. So that was a retail. That was a retail of these when they first launched. Um, one fifty to six fifty to thirteen hundred to twenty five thousand. Yeah. So would would you ever sell it? I mean, if I need a kidney, then yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I mean, like looking, if I were to end up looking for a house eventually in the future, right, um, a lot of these sneakers might have to go. And I know that this one, regardless that it's already used, you would still get a lot of value for this because it's that sawed off after. Like I know uh, somebody who was selling these, a used one, uh, for about a grand. And people were bidding on it. Mm. So I, I don't remember the exact amount that they started the bid for, but it was going up as high as a grand. And I just stopped. I'm like, I'm not going to pay a grand for that. Never mind. So I just can, stopped. Can you even try to articulate? So again, like for me, you know, well, all of us, we, we like cars. So we, we understand yeah. each other on cars. Right. right. Some of us like guns. We, we understand each other about guns. Right. And, and other like other things like that. But what is it in your mind makes a sneakerhead love shoes or sneakers that much? Well, I think it's the culture really, because um, the, the reason why I got into it, because I was thinking the same thing. Um, even before shooting this live, uh, I was thinking, how do I even get to the sneakers? Because when I was growing up in high school, uh, you know, I didn't really care much for it. It's like, it's like, whatever looks good, then fine. But then when I got into high uh, college, that's when I started to notice people trending with, let's say, their outfit. I'm like, okay, because I'm like somewhat into fashion too. Like I like how people dress. And then when you bring sneakers into it, it's just a whole, a whole other value to it. You're just like, huh, that doesn't actually look too bad. Hmm. And um, it's just the, the sneaker talk that you can have between other sneakerheads. You could talk about sneakers all day and then it leads into like people playing basketball. So it has a factor of, uh, I'm talking in particular basketball sneakers, like, like when you play ball with each other and then you guys uh, talk about sneakers and, and so-and-so, you talk about the player. Um, and a lot of it in turn has to be with the actual player. Like if you love the actual basketball player like LeBron and then you talk about his sneakers and you talk about the ones that like this, the most sought off, then you just get in a huge conversation. Like I can have a, I can have a huge and long conversation with a sneakerhead about basically anything about sneakers. So I think it's the, the the social aspect of it too, because you you can connect on a whole different level. I mean, they had things called sneaker con where people go to these live huge events for the weekend, almost like Comic Con, but it's about sneakers. And people go there and you see a whole, like a, basically a whole stadium full of rare sneakers and people just trading and talking sneakers and hoops. So it's a huge thing out there. Wow. Yeah. I never I mean, know. I never knew that was a thing. Yeah. yeah, sneaker con. Yeah, it's a it's, a, it's a big thing. Yeah, anything con, comic con. They have sneaker con. Yeah. So Is that right? shoe that you're or that sneaker that you're holding, is that come in other colors or that's literally yeah. that's no no no. This comes in so many other colors. I wish I had. I have different colorways of this uh, sneaker. Like like I said, they have a Christmas one where it's uh everything here where you see it's turquoise, it's red, and then the laces are green. But are they worth the same? No, not at all. Oh, it's just it's just something about this particular sneaker colorway that people just love. I guess maybe the vibe of it for being like Miami. Like when I think of South Beach, I think yeah. of Miami because South Beach, Miami. So when they say South Beach, you automatically think of this color. Hmm. And so again, the same model sneaker, just in a different color combo. Yeah, there's based a on... big difference huh. in, in pricing. And even if the the red color, if like say black and white. Probably has no resale value, but so the, the but the re, but retail is still like one fifty. Yeah, but people are gonna buy for for one fifty, but it's not gonna go much higher. No, than that. It, it probably won't even go high. Probably you'll probably lose money trying to trying to sell. And 
that's what I'm trying to explain to my parents if I'm trying to sell sneakers, uh, especially the ones that aren't as popular, I'm, I, I'm probably going to lose out on money. So let's say I pay a hundred bucks for a certain sneaker, even if it's not used, I can probably only get like 70 bucks for it. So I lose out on 30. Mm. But something like this that came out as 160, bought, I bought it for 650. Whoever had it, you know, made a huge profit. So like what more, if, if you had like, okay, you had, what you say, 400, how many pairs of sneakers? Five, five, five something. So I don't know. I, 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 I what, what are the, uh, what percentage are the rare breed that you could probably make a profit on and not take a loss? I would say maybe 40% of it. Dude, that's pretty Damn. good. Still not bad. Or about that's about, pretty about good. 40% of it, yeah. There's actually a LeBron 9 that I have. It's not here, I don't think. Uh, it's also called the South Beach, but it's not as expensive. It's huh. crazy. It's like it's like the silhouette is like gray, but the the there's and like there's like hits of turquoise. The lacing you can switch it to turquoise or pink or I think black. Um, same thing, same same exact uh, uh, name, but just the the model above this, but still doesn't sell as high as this one. I don't get it. So it, it really is it really is the sneaker itself. Yeah, there's a whole thing behind. It. I think it's because it really is his first sneaker when he went into Miami. No, I just don't, I don't, I don't get the, I'm not knocking it at all. I just don't understand the whole sneakerhead culture. No, it's, it's yeah. sort of like a shoot off of like collectibles, right? You know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Toy collectibles. There are like specific um, ones that are like known for a specific virgin. era or so rare because of something special. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Like, like I said, it's uh, the time right before he went to Miami. And then that's when he explored it. Because you know how he was pretty good in the cabs, but then he really wasn't well as well-known. I mean, you know he, who he was, but it's not like how he is right now. But then when you think about him playing in Miami, it's like he exploded from there, winning how many championships. Yo, and then, but then he now he's in... First one there, and then he went back to winning Cleveland, so... Yeah, right, and then now he's in Lakers. Yep. So, um, and actually there is a Lakers one now, the LeBron 7, but I couldn't get my hands on it. It's oh, like it's probably, like that's probably gonna call, that's gonna probably people. I had a hard time getting that. Like I tried, but I couldn't get it. It's... Um, but yeah, so that's that's sneaker number one. Uh, sneaker number two is a little crazy, and um, like I don't think a lot of people know this. I don't even think my wife knows this. She's gonna find out if she watches this. She, she is gonna <laughs> find out. I mean, she's downstairs, so I'm sure she can hear this. But um, so the, so this next one is uh. I mean, I'm sure you guys know who all, all know who Kanye West is. Yeah, uh, who's that? And you, yeah, oh, <laughs> he's a he's a he's an RB singer, Ryan. Oh, okay, he's, he's, uh, he's <laughs> Kanye East's rival. <laughs> so, so this one, um, I, I mean, Mar Marjorie, or uh, do you remember um, the the party we were at last week, and then um, she brought a whole bunch of thinkers for for people. No. Yeah. So those are what they call Yeezys, right? Yeah. Okay, so same line, same thing, but um, those are, I mean, that, that particular model that they had, uh, they were given is, uh, there's multiple colorways of it, and it's pretty, it's not really sought off after just because it's pretty recent and there's a lot of it. So the resale value of that isn't as bad. But, but these, the ones I'm about to pull out, these are, uh, They've only made this, I think, in four different colorways and only for a limited time. And right now, the value of these sneakers, they're each one, even the one, the colorway that not a, not a lot of people like, it's still pretty high. It's well over a grand. And that's the one that's the least of the favorite. I'm talking some of them are as high as like three grand. So let me see if I can find an example of one. Depending on the size, size 13 is going to be like 50. Size 13, yeah. But I, it actually, the smaller the size is because a lot of people have smaller feet. So those are the ones that are actually more expensive. Hmm. Yeah. So that size 13 that we saw at the South Beach being 25 grand, I was like, hey, no. So these shoes that you're talking about, are they still being made like in the factory right now? Like there's more of it coming out or? Uh, Stop. I, I haven't heard of the South Beach 8. I haven't heard of the LeBron 8 um, being retroed, meaning coming back out. But 
the sevens, they came out years ago when I was still in college. And um, like I said, last uh, year in December, I picked up the LeBron seven uh, Christmas because now they're starting to bring back some of the older models. And for this one, the one I just pulled out, I haven't heard anything about that model or that colorway coming out. So I guess that's another reason why it's so expensive because it hasn't been out in quite some time and okay, people are still so looking for it. Yeah, it's the uh, rarity of it. Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. So for, for this model that I'm about to show you, for my particular size, it's 1400 and what's the most expensive size Five five and a half five and a half oh. three grand for five and a yeah. half for a five and a half yep and the uh, the cheapest one i see here is 930 which is an 11 and a half and what did you pay for it <laughs> uh, i paid a one g oh you paid a grand I paid a grand. Damn. Yeah. But but right here for my size it's fourteen hundred. So I guess I say four hundred bucks. Nice. <laughs> I, I guess. Have you worn uh, them though? Because if they're brand new, that's when you could get that money for it, right? Again, I think I wore once to church. <laughs> get them blessed. And, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna show you. Um so these are the Yeezys uh V one because this is the first model of the Yeezys in Adidas that came out. And these are called the Pirate Black. And if you can see here, like it's still very, 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 very clean. So you wait for a really, really nice day and you watch every step you take? <laughs> uh, pretty much. I mean, I probably wouldn't even go to the house with this. Dude, one grand walking around in the yeah. oh. Exactly. So, so my mindset is when I first bought these, um, I was like, holy crap, these are so rare. But how much are these? A grand? It's like, so I actually have to check my bank account. I was like, do I have enough money for this? So I'm looking at my savings. I'm looking at my checking. I'm just like, I can technically get it. And I don't know when's the next opportunity I'm going to get to get these because these are so rare. Because they're not made anymore. So I'm like, I have to take advantage of it, even though it's a grand. So I'm like, and this is my sneakerhead brain working. Like not even my, my common sense or like my morals and values <laughs> of what I need to, to pay for. It's like, you know, you got bills. You have a, uh, you have uh, just like, you know, like a uh, mortgage and whatever. I'm like, no, nah, I think I got to get these. So yeah, I pulled the trigger on these and I bought them. And then um, I've only used them once again because I was going to church. And I don't think I've ever worn them afterwards. And I've had this before I was even married. Oh, wow. So you're, so you're talking about maybe a little bit over four years of me having this. And I haven't, I haven't even really touched it. Um, but these, uh, a lot of people for, for this, um, this one you have to really be careful because there's a lot of rep, 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 people replicating it, people selling fakes uh, on these. So you really have to find a reputable place to purchase these. Um, I wouldn't just go to like eBay and just start, oh, well, this looks good and then end up buying it. No, you got to really do your research on these. So for these in particular, I would need to see these in person. I can't just go off, of, even the South Beach, I had to actually be in person to actually look at them. Jeez. I don't want to pay a grand and I get something cheap <laughs> and, and fake. And then the value of it is like 40 bucks and you paid a grand. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a little crazy, but um, yeah, I mean. How many of your, your speakers were impulsed by? <laughs> a lot, a lot. Oh my God. Um, I have a lot of, I could do, I could do one where I can, uh, grab the sneakers that I regret buying. I can grab some of the sneakers that I have impulse buying, but we'll save that for another, uh, we'll save that for another episode. But no, um, wait, regret why? Maybe because at the time I was all hyped up about it. I was like, oh, this looks good. But then as I kept looking at it more and more, I'm like, why the hell did I buy these? <laughs> it's like, it's like one of those factors where you're in that moment. Again, with these, you're in that moment where you just like, something comes over you and you just impulse buy. And yeah. some of those impulse Habit. buys are actually by regrets too. Mm. So uh, if you, if anybody out there watching this, you end up being a sneakerhead, just know that the culture is, it's not a cheap hobby. It's very expensive as you can tell. 
Um, especially <laughs> if you're going for really hyped sneakers, uh, you're going to be paying an obscene amount of money. You're talking about four times the, the, the retail value. Like, I believe when these came out, these are only 200 bucks. And I've, I've actually paid five times more for, for this pair. And now they're going even as high as seven times more. So, so the, when you regret buy those, those sneakers, have you looked up the, re, the reselling value? Oh, I would lose money. Oh, you already know. E yeah, easily. So again, my parents saying that I should sell some of my sneakers, but I'm like, you know how much money I'm going to lose? I mean, their mentality is that you may lose money, but at least you're gaining money back. Right. Um, but if they were me, I would at least want to make some money or if not make anything or just break even. Yeah. So it's like, I never, I never bought it, but um, it's kind of hard right now. Uh, considering the fact that where I usually buy my sneakers or sell sneakers, um, they're closed right now because of COVID. Um, and I don't trust like selling um, like online or whatnot. I rather go to an actual store and then uh, uh, hand them this and then they review the sneaker and then based off of that, then that's how much money they'll give. I've done that to a couple of sneakers before where I thought I would get more for what I originally bought them for, but I think because at the time that I sold it, it wasn't really sought off, which I thought it was, but it wasn't. So I actually lost money on that, but I already had it there. So I was like, you know, just, just take it. So there's yeah, actually really sneakerhead stores. Like you could go there and yeah. you can trust that they're like legit, you know? Yeah, because they do a lot of legit checks um, before they even uh, put them to the public. And I know that some people tried selling fakes over there and they turned them down. They're like, these are fake. What are you trying to do? Yeah. It's like, no. And, you know, they have a reputation now because they're starting to grow. Um, they have one here in Menlo. And then I think they have one in Palisades. Oh, okay. In New, in, in New York. So then they're starting to grow. So their reputation, if they start selling fakes, it's going to diminish. So they don't want to do that to themselves. Um, but yeah. So, so this basically, is one. whenever you get a house and you need some, uh, some furniture or gym equipment, you just sell the regret buys <laughs> at a loss and use that money yeah. to buy uh, your furniture and some gym equipment. That's, that's, that's actually kind of why I'm holding on to a good amount of them because as the years go by, the values of these, I feel like they will go up, especially if they're barely used. I mean, mind you, ones that are still used, they're probably still like a grand and they're used. So imagine if it's not used, you're, you can probably maybe double your profit. I can probably sell these for, even though they're used, I could probably sell them for like 15, 1500. And I know people will buy it. Like that's, uh, that's like a, that's like a guarantee. I know people will buy it. I know people who want it still. So. Hey, but power rack, some um, some weights, and uh... yeah. Uh, actually, these <laughs> these two sneakers combined, if I if I yeah, uh, sell for the amount, yeah, I can buy like a whole uh, squat rack with it, with just these two sneakers and more, and more. Yeah, man, it's amazing. It's uh the it's the uh, the sneaker culture. I'm telling you, I don't know. I don't know why. I I don't know, just. Like I just got into it. I got sucked into it and I just kept at it. Um, I, actually here, uh, I see a lot of people in the complex here. They walk around with pretty nice looking sneakers. So it, it, it's everywhere. Uh, even at work, I see a lot of, and you know what's funny? I mean, not to sound uh, like I'm generalizing like certain people or, or groups, but I see a lot of Filipinos, huge on sneakers, huge, especially at work. I'm like, all right, okay. I see a lot of them wearing some rare ones too. Hmm. So, do you try to like outwear them? Mm, no. <laughs> what do you? What's your daily I mean, wear? What do you wear every day? I wear. I I do wear a pair of Yeezys. That's one of my daily beaters. Um, okay. but I, but I got them for retail, so not they're not too bad. Oh. They're not like, they're not like a grand. Um, and then I wear like a pair of Jordan Eight that are really old. They're like over ten years old. I don't care if I beat them up. Okay, so you still wear shoes that are like, you know, sneaker heads will know like you're a sneaker Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if they look at my sneaker, they'll know what it is. They're like, oh, okay. I was oh. like, yeah, it's kind of beat up, but you know. But then I, I have an extra pair of it in, in, the, in my collection. Still nice, <laughs> having used and not planning to use it yet. So nice. some of the ones that I have like holy grails on, I'll probably double up a pair. One to actually wear and then the other one I'll just stock in the back. Just so I know I have a fresh pair later on. Um, they're like rare or it doesn't come out for a really long time. I know I have a fresh pair. And if I do decide, I could actually sell it. Like at times I am disappointed that I did spend so much. But then again, it's like at that moment, 
when that moment is in front of you and you literally blank out and all common sense flies out the window and all you can think about is like, holy crap, I'm holding one of the rare sneakers in my hand, in my size. The only factor is that it's an obscene amount of money. What do I do? What do I do? And then like, again, e- exactly. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> and actually, um, if I really think about it, both these were impulse buys. They're just really expensive. Jeez. Because I, I, like I, I had no intention of even buying any or sneakers at that time. From what I remember, especially with the, with the Yeezys being a grand, I didn't have any intention of, I, I didn't even know, that, like, I, like I wasn't even looking for them. I just went into the store because I'm like, oh, there's a sneaker store here. Cool. So I started browsing around. Then I saw them. I'm like, wow, these are really rare. Let me look at them. It's my size. I'm like, oh, crap. How much is it? A grand. Ah, crap. <laughs> and then I literally walked out of the store and back and walked around the mall and back. And I'm still debating. I'm still thinking. I'm like, should I get them? And yeah, if something came over me. It's like, screw it. Check my bank account. Check my savings. Check my, my checking account. Yeah, I can survive. All right, oh I'm going to do it. God. It's, not, it's definitely not the smartest thing to do. And I don't recommend anybody <laughs> buying something that expensive ever. I mean, impulse buying something you're just not even sure of. Like, you have to go into your account, your, your checking, your savings, just to look if you have enough to, to survive. Like, okay, I have bills coming up. Can I afford to pay for that? Uh, for these sneakers, can I pay for both? Can I still survive? Am I going to eat this week? You know, something <laughs> like that. You don't, you don't ever want to be things, in that spot. The right. essential things of life. Again, my common sense went out the door. <laughs> 